Support for NPR and the following message come from Sattva. Sattva luxury mattresses are every bit as elegant as the most expensive brands, but because they're sold online, they're about half the price. Visit com slash NPR and save an additional $200. Hey there, you're listening to It's Been a Minute from NPR. I'm Brittany Luce. Now, I love country music. My little sister was a big fan when we were growing up, and we used to watch CMT all the time as kids. So it was cool to see that three country songs were sitting at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 this week. But then you press play. That is the opening verse from Jason Aldean's Try That in a Small Town, which hit number one this week. He sings, cuss out a cop, spit in his face, stomp on the flag and light it up. Yeah, you think you're tough? Well, try that in a small town. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, when I heard those lyrics for the first time, I had a feeling Aldean was referring to the 2020 Black Lives Matter uprisings. Turns out, I wasn't just imagining it. A couple weeks ago, he released the music video. And as he's singing those lines, protest footage from those uprisings flash across the screen. Not to mention, Aldean himself is singing in front of a courthouse where a black teen was lynched and in a town only 40 minutes from where the KKK was founded. The video was pulled from CMT, but the song just got more popular. Country star Jason Aldean grateful for his supportive fans in the wake of the backlash over that song, Try That in a Small Town, as its streaming soars nearly 1,000%. It's now the number one song in the U.S. Is that what it takes to be a successful country artist today? Racism? I ask because Jason Aldean isn't the only artist using anti-Black rhetoric. Morgan Wallen's song, Last Night, currently sits at number two and has been number one for 14 weeks. And he, too, gained notoriety for being racist. A couple years ago, he was caught on tape using the N-word. Just like Aldean, he was pulled from CMT. And also like Aldean, that only made him more popular. The last time a country song by a solo male artist reached number one was 42 years ago. Again, I have to ask, is racism what it takes for country music to go number one? Country music, which comes from black music? It is really the huge contradiction at the center of country music, that it's somehow both become this symbol of racism, but it's also just built on such multiracial, diverse things. I put my question to Amanda Martinez. She's a country music historian at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. It is both of these things at the same time. I wanted to know how country music became this symbol of racism and why country music fans are flocking to stars like Aldean and Wallen, who are peddling racist rhetoric today. Here's Amanda Martinez. I think the thing to remember with country music is it is an invention of the music industry. Hmm. It's a marketing category that was invented in the 1920s. So what happened was in the 1920s, popular music is starting to grow as a business and Mm -hmm. Americans are starting to have more opportunities to purchase that recorded music. So all of these record executives were looking around and saying, hey, how can I grow this market? Right. Right. How can I find more consumers? So what they did was they went into the U.S. South and they started to record musicians. Now, a lot of Southerners, regardless of race, in this case, I'm just talking about regardless of whether they were white or black, they often enjoyed the same music. Right. Whether it was the blues, whether it was what we now come to call the roots of country music. Mm -hmm. But when record executives went to record these artists, you have to remember this was the era of Jim Crow segregation. Hmm. So they recorded this music along racial lines. So from that, you got the invention of two categories. One was hillbilly and old time music which has evolved into country music as we understand it today and that was marketed to 
white rural Southerners. And on the flip side, you had quote unquote race music, which was for black Southerners. And I would argue in large part, we still have that music. We have pop music and then we have white music and black music. Mm, Yeah. They've just evolved. That is really interesting. I did not know any of that. But like thinking of country music as a marketing designation, kind of, I don't know, it, it speaks to the idea that like, marketers or music industry executives were looking to capture a demographic exactly rather than promote a certain style of singing exactly and that's how it's evolved across time and how it continues to be associated with a certain demographic which is a white adult conservative audience huh you know When you talk about like, you know, conservative audience, I mean, Jason Aldean's song seems to espouse some of the same values that many people are getting from right wing American politics. You know, the the thing about Try This is that this song has become even more popular, almost it seems like because many people found it so offensive. And even country music institutions like CMT have stopped airing the video. But obviously... Many other people have liked the song and streamed it. How is this song speaking to Aldine's fans? And how are they showing their support for the song? Sure. Well, this song, I think, is speaking to Aldine's fans in similar ways to another incident that really kind of rocked country music over the last couple years, which had to do with Morgan Wallen, where he Mm. was caught on tape yelling a racial slur and... You know, similar conversations came up about racism in country music and, you know, how should this be dealt with? And like Aldine, Morgan Wallen shot to the top of the charts and he stayed there. This speaks to the targeted country music core fan base, which again is that white conservative. The one thing I think that is different about this moment for country music over the last few years is that even though racism has, in a way, defined country music as long as it's existed for 100 years, it really has not been until the last few years that it has been publicly, seriously pressured to reckon with that racism. I mean, these conversations Mm. have come up plenty of times on a smaller level before, but this kind of united effort very loud effort to hold country music accountable has, I think, in turn made these kind of outcries against racism louder and as a consequence Mm. has made the emboldened core conservative fan base for country music double down on claiming these artists like Aldine and Wallen. Hmm. We've also seen artists with left-leaning political views use their music and visuals to communicate their politics. One example is Beyonce with her video for Formation, where she's perched on top of a New Orleans cop car, partially submerged underwater. Beyond the very clear difference in political views, what are the other differences between what Aldine is doing with his messaging and what Beyonce was doing with her messaging? Yeah, I mean, I think on the surface with Beyonce's politics and political messaging, it's calling for greater liberation of more people. Whereas Mm. Aldine is calling for the opposite, right? Where he's calling for a suppression of those calls for greater freedoms. Mm -hmm. But I think beyond that, these differences really speak to, again, how artists and music genres on a more basic level, are really marketing categories, right? Mm -hmm. They're not simply art. They are a type of art that is directed at a specific type of consumer. And this marketing campaign has been going on for 100 years. Coming up, Amanda and I get into how country music has pitted white versus black artists to shore up its fan base. This message comes from NPR sponsor, BetterHelp. Life comes with a lot of decisions, and it can be hard to know the right path sometimes. A therapist can help you map out what you really want, so you trust yourself to make great choices and feel excited about the future. BetterHelp offers convenient, professional online therapy on your schedule, however you want it, by phone, chat, or video call. 
Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NPR today to get 10% off your first month. This message comes from NPR sponsor Noom. Eating is an emotional experience, which is why managing your weight needs to be a psychological one. Noom uses science and personalization to help you manage your weight for the long term. Their psychology-based approach helps you build better habits and behaviors that are easier to maintain. The best part? You decide how Noom fits into your life, not the other way around. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com. From the Rough Translation podcast, when falling in love means risking your life, this group in India promises to protect lovers. The Love Commandos. The Love Commandos. I was like, wow, this is so cool. But are they heroes or villains? Listen to Love Commandos on NPR's Embedded, wherever you get your podcasts. Country music as a genre has been around for 100 years. How has it continued to shore up its fan base? Right. I mean, this is something that's so fascinating to me, that country music has existed as a marketing category for 100 years. And there really isn't any other type of music to compare it to. Like, you can't really compare it to pop music because pop music doesn't have as defined of an identity, right? So I think that country music has maintained its relevancy because it has carved out this niche in popular music where it is this place for conservatives to feel seen. And I Mm -hmm. think that you can witness this throughout time If you look at, for instance, certain moral panics. So in the context of the early days of country music, there was a moral panic surrounding jazz. And at that point, jazz was black music, right? Right, right, right. But it was also decried as the devil's music. And Mm -hmm. you had a lot of famous white supremacists like Henry Ford, for instance, who celebrated hillbilly and old time music as, quote unquote, morally good music. This came up again in the 50s when rock and roll broke out. And of course, that was initially understood as black music. It was black music, but that was more clear in those earlier days. And when you had moral panic surrounding rock and roll, country music continued to be held up as the kind of white moral superior. And it again has come up in recent decades as the antithesis of the supposedly immoral politics of rap and hip hop. I think we're continuing to see conservatives kind of hold up country music as supposedly morally superior to an alternative, youth-oriented, Black popular music. Hmm. You know, there, there have always been like peaks and valleys in the mainstream popularity of country music. And right now we're having like another moment with three country songs in the top five of the Hot 100, Jason Aldean's Small Town, uh, Morgan Wallen's Last Night, and Luke Combs' Fast Car, which is a shockingly derivative cover of Tracy Chapman's original. Tracy Chapman, of course, is a Black woman. What does it say about our broader culture right now that for the first time in decades, country music, and specifically country music, that is having overt tension (laughs) In some ways, some might even say opposition, music that is positioning itself in opposition to Blackness, is catching on not just with its normal fan base, but with a much wider fan base. Because, I mean, in order for these songs to become as popular as they have been, you can't just have your usual country music listeners or even just dedicated and casual country music listeners. You need to be reaching people who are outside of that country music base, A lot of people are jiving with these songs right now. What does that mean? I'm talking about the bass audience, right? The bass targeted audience. I'm not trying to say this is reflective of all listeners. I think that, A, they want to listen to white men. That has been hugely reflected in the country music charts historically. And they want to stick it to any kind of progressives who might be calling for a more inclusive country music space. Unfortunately, I think that these three very successful songs at the top of the charts only encourages the country music business to continue doing what it's always done, which is 
making a product for a white conservative base. Because at the end of the day, this is a business where the goal is to make money. And it's clear where they're making their money in the biggest way right now. So they have no incentive to deviate from that. Where things get interesting is with the Luke Combs, Tracy Chapman cover of Fast Car, because I think that there is a very superficial reading of that cover that supposedly this is something that redeems country music's systemic racism, right? Because this is a guy covering a song by a Black woman. And I think that that's really symbolic of how country music has often deflected claims of racism, where there's these very superficial or minimal examples of, you know, see, we have this one piece of a Black presence here, so we're not racist. But I also want to highlight that in this moment, we're also seeing the flip side, where there are more inclusive spaces being opened up through things like social media and the internet for country music listeners who might be Black. I think that there are some glimmers of a more kind of inclusive, hopeful future for country music. Hmm. Well, look, as a fan... As somebody who has enjoyed my fair share of country music, I I want to feel optimistic about that future. Also, I want to be able to continue enjoying some of the music that in many ways I, I grew up with. But thank you so much, Amanda, for coming on the show today and talking with me about this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was very, I really enjoyed it. That was Amanda Martinez. She's a country music historian at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. This episode was produced by Barton Girdwood and edited by Jessica Placek and Verilyn Williams. I'm Brittany Luce, and thank you for listening to It's Been a Minute from NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from Bombas, making socks, underwear, and T-shirts that feel good and do good, giving 100 million items of clothing to people who need them. Go to bombas.com slash NPR and use NPR for 20% off your first purchase. This message comes from NPR sponsor Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. So Mint Mobile is offering premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. To get your new phone plan for just $15, go to mintmobile.com slash switch.